my friends, class is back in session. This is Menopause University, where you learn how to manage your menopause your way. And you also learn how to avoid the things to which you say, no way. <laughs> Epithelial ovarian cancer is one of the things to which most women say, no way. <laughs> so this is a big unit on epithelial ovarian cancer. It began with video number 413. And you learned in the early videos of this unit that the particular kind of ovarian cancer for which women are most likely to say no way is epithelial ovarian cancer. And here we are at video number 424. Video 421 was the first video on the risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. And since then, we've been addressing a single category of risk factors in each video. Here's our chart of risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. If you focus on the mauve colored row, one third of the way down the chart, you see personal history as a risk factor. And that's what we'll be addressing today. Here it is in isolation. Now, all of chapter 32, in both the first and the second editions of my book is on epithelial ovarian cancer. So the risk factors are there. But everything in that chapter is abbreviated compared to the detail I give you in these videos. The category of personal history as a risk factor for a disease can vary with regard to one, what, what one might include. But in this case, it refers to your personal medical history. You've seen that for some diseases, your personal history of one disease can increase your risk for another disease. So we'll be focusing on which other diseases can increase your risk for epithelial ovarian cancer. Now, I have taught you before that all cancers are the result of a single cell that becomes damaged enough to incur genetic mutations. These scarves are prop for genetic mutations on a chromosome. These mutations that cause a cancer are not hereditary mutations that are present at birth. Instead of being hereditary mutations, they become mutations in the course of your lifetime due to repeated trauma of one kind or another. Eventually, they become so abnormal that they lose control of their normal functions and then they behave abnormally. In the case of cancers, they reproduce excessively and ultimately invade the surrounding anatomy. You saw in the breast cancer unit that any old kind of cancer increases your risk for breast cancer. And this is because if you've incurred enough damage to cells in one part of your body to cause cancer, you are likely to have incurred enough damage in other parts of your body to cause cancer. I tend to think of this tendency to get cancer as somewhat of a cancer cloud. It hovers over you, making you prone to more than just one cancer. And it just keeps raining on you, causing one cancer after another. But if you take another look at the isolated personal history category of risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer, notice that it doesn't list just any old kind of cancer as a risk factor. It lists only breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So you might be surprised that I'm talking about just any old kind of cancer rather than just the two specific cancers listed in the chart of risk factors. Well, that's because I like to give you the most complete education I possibly can. And a really complete list of risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer would include just any old kind of cancer. So let me just take a couple of minutes to talk about the any old kinds of cancers that are not on our list of risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. There are three reasons as to why 
just any old kind of cancer is not listed as a risk factor. The first reason just any old kind of cancer is not listed as a risk factor is that epithelial ovarian cancer is a fairly uncommon disease. And the more uncommon a disease, the less research on it there is, due solely to inadequate numbers of cases. Every list of risk factors for any disease is a list that has evolved from available research. And if there isn't enough research to justify listing a particular factor as a verified risk factor, it doesn't make the list. That doesn't mean it can't contribute. It just means that we don't have enough evidence that it definitely contributes. But sometimes plain old common sense tells you that it contributes, and that's the case here. The fact that cancers beget cancers is enough to acknowledge the fact that any old kind of cancer in the past is a risk factor for cancer in the future. Once a cancer patient always a cancer patient. The second reason just any old kind of cancer is not listed as a risk factor is that most of the other cancers that increase your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer fall into the category of hereditary ovarian cancers. Here's the chart of just the hereditary epithelial ovarian cancers. If you focus on the last row, you see that hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer syndrome is a category of epithelial ovarian cancers all by itself. Well, the fact that this category is caused by genetic mutations rather than by mere personal history puts it in the hereditary category rather than in this non-hereditary category of personal history. Reason just any old kind of cancer is not listed as a risk factor is that most of the other kinds of cancers that increase your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer are the very kinds of cancer that are typically due to these genetic mutations. They include colorectal cancer, small intestine cancer, stomach cancer, pancreatic cancer, bile duct cancer, bladder cancer, skin cancer, brain cancer and uterine cancer. But the principle I taught you in, an earlier in earlier cancer tutorials of once a cancer patient, always a cancer patient, still applies. If you have ever had any kind of cancer, you are at higher risk of having other kinds of cancers, including epithelial ovarian cancer. Okay. Now that you understand this basic principle, let's delve into the details of the three items that are listed as personal history risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. The first specific item of personal medical history on the chart of risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer is a previous medical history of ovarian cancer itself. And this is actually a risk factor for two separate things. First, if you've ever had any kind of ovarian cancer, you are at higher risk of getting epithelial ovarian cancer. You learned in video number 417 that there are many different kinds of ovarian cancers. Ovarian cancer can originate from any of the three different kinds of cells in your ovaries. The germ cells, which are the egg cells, the gonadal stromal cells, which are the hormone producing cells, or the epithelial cells, which are skin cells. So a previous history of a germ cell or gonadal stromal cell ovarian cancer is a risk factor for a later epithelial ovarian cancer. The second way a previous ovarian cancer is a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer is if you've had epithelial ovarian cancer itself and it comes back. This is what we call a recurrence. It's like a cancer cloud that keeps on raining. Recurrent epithelial ovarian cancer is when you have it once respond to treatment, 
but get it again. In most cases, there were some errant cells that did not get eradicated. But even if there weren't any errant cells that did not get eradicated, you are still at increased risk for another epithelial ovarian cancer. So a personal history of ovarian cancer is a biggie in terms of risk factors. Next on the list of personal history as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer is a personal history of breast cancer. And once again, there are a number of reasons that a previous history of breast cancer is a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer. The first reason a history of breast cancer is a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer is that some forms of breast cancer are caused by a genetic mutation that also causes epithelial ovarian cancer. You saw in video number 422 on the genetic mutations for ovarian cancer that there is a specific syndrome that causes both breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Here's the hereditary risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer again. The very first item called hereditary breast ovarian cancer syndrome is the best known of all the genetic mutations for both breast cancer and ovarian cancer. They are both commonly due to the genetic mutations known as BRCA1 and BRCA2. This syndrome accounts for the highest percentage of hereditary breast cancers as well as hereditary epithelial ovarian cancers. The second reason a history of breast cancer is a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer is that the entire lists of risk factors for both breast cancer and epithelial ovarian cancer are practically identical. Here's the chart of mirror images that I made for you in video number 420. You've seen this chart many times. Breast cancer is on the left. Epithelial ovarian cancer is on the right. Most of the categories and specific risk factors for the two are completely identical. So for many women, a history of either breast cancer or ovarian cancer is a risk factor for the other. Because of this close association between breast cancer and ovarian cancer, it's really odd that women worry so much about breast cancer and so little about epithelial ovarian cancer. The third item on our chart of risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer is endometriosis. I first taught you about endometriosis way, way back in videos 138, 139, and 140. And lo and behold, here it is cropping up again in the unit on epithelial ovarian cancer. <laughs> this is why it's so critical to watch my videos in order. My mind is always miles and years ahead as to where this education is headed. <laughs> I will delve into the reasons endometriosis is a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer, but not today. And that's because it is listed more than once on our chart of risk factors. Look down to the red section in the second to last place on the chart. There it is again in the category of inflammatory risk factors. And it's also hidden in one of the other categories. So it's just premature to go into detail about it today. You know how committed I am to delivering this education in an order and manner that will ensure your understanding. And while all women say no way to epithelial ovarian cancer, I go even farther by saying no way to anything that can sabotage your education. So I will wait until I presented all the risk factor categories before I give you a tutorial dedicated solely to endometriosis as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer. That will be video number 431, seven weeks from today. Now, if we add some of these details from today's tutorial to the personal history category of our risk factors chart, in order to summarize this lesson, we get this. So now you see that a personal history of ovarian cancer can entail 
germ cell ovarian cancer, gonadal stromal cell ovarian cancer, or recurrent epithelial ovarian cancer. And you see that a previous history of breast cancer is breast cancer due to hereditary breast ovarian cancer syndrome. But you also know that any kind of cancer anywhere in your body is also a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer. And we're leaving the section on endometriosis for later. That's why it's blank for now. <laughs> we can fill it in later in video number 431. Now, this chart is not complete because we just don't know everything. When I do the research for these video tutorials, I look high and low for accurate data to give you. And sometimes it just doesn't exist. When that's the case, I'm going to tell you that we just don't know. I'm not going to skirt the issue. I'm not going to generalize. I'm not going to make it up. No way. You can always count on me to tell you the whole truth and the whole story. And the truth is that epithelial ovarian cancer is a very understudied disease for which there is much missing information. So accept the fact that there will be some gaps in our knowledge. So that's it for now. Please come back next week to address your family history as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer. Please, please go to menopausetaylor.me and schedule that consultation you deserve. Pretty please subscribe to my newsletter and channel. <laughs> and if you please, <laughs> follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Stories, Twitter, TikTok, you name it. Bye, my dears.